What is going on, everybody? Daddy back here for another reaction video for you guys, man. Appreciate you guys stopping by the channel once again. If you guys have not, make sure you guys smash the subscribe button with the notification bell turned on. Make sure you guys give the video a like as well. Uh, today, man, we're going to be checking out a very interesting video that I'm really interested in checking out. And uh, I hope you guys are too, man. I hope you guys are interested in checking it out along with me. If you guys would like to watch the video in full by yourself, link will be in the description. So make sure you guys click the first link in the description, go to the original video, and check it out for yourself if you want to watch it without my commentary. But one of the main key components when it comes to pro wrestling is the storytelling aspect. Tr getting the audience invested in the story that you're telling. And a huge way that pro wrestlers do that is obviously by their promo work, their promo skills, being on the mic. Whether it's, you know, two guys having a feud that has gone a couple of years or if it's brand new or whatever. You know, a guy getting on the microphone and explaining why he needs and why he feels he's entitled to win that 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 big match or whatever at said show. Promos are a huge key component when it comes to pro wrestling because it gets you into the story. Not just the in-ring aspect or whatever, but you got to really hear, you know, what makes these performers fantastic at what they do. And we're going to be checking that out, man. I already know CM Punk. It's bound to be on this list, man. MJF, maybe, uh, is bound to be on this list, man, with that pipe bomb that he cut on Tony Khan. I don't know, man, but we're going to be checking this out, man. Wrestling Flashback came out five days ago. Top 10 wrestlers whose promos got way too real. So we're about to hear some pipe bombs, ladies and gentlemen. Let's check this out. Let's check this out, bro. What's up, the song? John Cena. do your job. Wrestling has the ability to blend talent's real lives into its storylines like no other form of scripted entertainment. I want to be the catalyst. Told you CM Punk was going to be in here. Really what you mean is you will only accept change if it means CM Punk is on top. You going to punch me in the face or do you got to go ask your wife permission first? Today we're Damn, going to explore bro. how the sport does this by highlighting those who frequently bring up real life drama. I'm really interested in seeing what's on this list. Paul Heyman. As we cover the top 10 pipe bomb promo cutters in wrestling. Number 10, Samoa Joe. Joe has often been a savage cutting promos as he has been in the ring. Samoa Joe, man. The new AW World Champion, bro. The dude's a fucking boss. It's about time people put some respect on Joe's name, man. Especially when his ammo on the mic is loaded with reality. Like when Joe shot on Scott Hall for no showing a pay-per-view in TNA. Scott Hall, Chico, kiss my ass. You punked out and you're a punk. Joe also took aim at Kevin Nash, which later led to a physical confrontation backstage. TNA is the men who come in here, risk their lives on scaffoldings, on wires, while others show up and pad their pensions. They said... Was that from Russo or was that yours? Smirked at me, said that was mine. So I fucking open hand smacked him. And he just fucking looked at me. So I smacked him again. Some of Joe's best mic work in WWE came during his feud with Jeff Hardy, where the Samoan submission machine mocked Hardy's past addiction issues. I, Cause for us men I, I, I will say this, man. I'm not a fan of... Obviously, there has to be some level of realism in pro wrestling or whatever just to get people in the audience into you know the story that you're telling or whatever whatever feud that may be but when it comes to somebody that struggles with like an, an addiction issue or anything like personal like there was one storyline where matt hardy and jeff were feuding and you know I, in real life jeff's house had burnt down and um vince mcmahon wrote an entire storyline or whatever about how matt hardy was the one responsible and Jeff ended up losing one of his dogs, and I it was a very um it was a very real life situation that played out on TV, and I'm I don't necessarily like real life tragic situations. I don't know if I'm really into that being played out on television just because like of how personal that is. You know WWE, you know they're they're quick to you know fire you for substance issues, but yet. You know, they do, they spend weeks and weeks and weeks on television, you know, just, you know, highlighting it and, you know, talking about it and adding it to a storyline or whatever. And I'm just not that big of a fan. So as much as I like Joe and as much as now I like WWE, I didn't like WWE back then, especially when the old man was running things. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan at, you know, 
adding that that much realism into storylines. Many times as this man has made you get up out of your seat, there are just as many times, Jeff, that you let all these people down. Well, it can be really rough this time of year, and we both know, Jeff, that eventually your demons, Jeff, they're going to come running right back, and they're going to start controlling you. How's it going, Jeff? I trust that you and the family enjoyed the holidays. It's always nice to create new memories, perhaps even make up for some of the ones that you've destroyed. You can choose to have 14 of these and wake up in jail. That is if you're fortunate enough to wake up at all. Keep on talking. Hey, 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 do me a favor. Why don't you act like this is an AA meeting and you shut your mouth while I'm sharing with the crew. Number nine, Jim Cornette. Cornette made a career. Oh, Jim Cornette, man. We've also seen him take personal Here issues. Here we fucking as well as go. Real life opinions and express them on television. Just a couple of years ago, I left my home in Tennessee and I moved to Connecticut, which is like trading a Hawaiian vacation for a bed in a cancer ward. Will Jim Cornette come back to the ECW arena? I'd rather go skinny dipping in a septic tank of a slaughterhouse and come back to that. His famous shoot promos on Raw in 1997 were living proof. Six, one, two, three, kid. His name's Sean Mott Waltman, whatever you want to call him. As far as I'm concerned, the only reason that he's employed is because the other guys think that he's funny when he gets drunk and throws up on himself. They were in keeping with the WWF's shift towards a more realistic product at the time, and they occurred just weeks before the official start of the Attitude Era. Wrestling fans watching a wrestling program want to see wrestlers wrestle. That's, that's easy. It's not too hard to understand. Cornette spat bullets, taking aim at WCW. So they sit around all day, listening to people on the internet, and the people on the internet wouldn't know a wrist lock from a wrist watch. The NWO. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the NWO was like a bunch of... It's kind of, it's kind of weird that, you know, he was just talking shit about people on the internet. Now he's making a career off of the internet. I, I don't know, man. And, like, you know, where he was talking about how, obviously, like, this was... Before I started watching, like, on a regular basis, like, run, I didn't start watching in 97, but I didn't start watching until Bad Blood 97, and even then, I wasn't watching, like, every week. I would watch, like, whenever I go went to my friend Eric's house or whatever, but, like, him, like, talking about how, you know, the audience wants to see people wrestle, you know, it's a wrestling show. They want, you know, people want to see people wrestle, and that's what AEW does, pretty much, and he bags on AEW for the wrestling and not so much as tell, trying to tell a cohesive story. I don't know, man. That's Jim Cornette for you. You guys meeting out in the backyard in a clubhouse in a tree. And on a personal note to Hulk Hogan, you are a household word, but so is garbage. And it stinks when it gets old, too. Roddy Piper. By the 10 minute mark, they were sucking wind so bad, the first three rows passed out of oxygen deprivation. Would have been funny if it wasn't so sad. Shawn Michaels. Well, Shawn Michaels is still the single most talented athlete in wrestling today inside the ring. But outside, he's an adolescent obnoxious jerk. Bro, he cut a promo on literally everybody, man. Sports columnist Phil Mucknick. Who regularly badmouth wrestling? I say go to hell, Phil Mushnick, and try to reform things down there, because we're doing just fine up here without you. Jim was even taking jabs at Vince Russo all the way then, as Jim referred to Vince as a Yankee. Oh God. Teeth, phony hair and a phony tan, and running the WWF, you got a whole office building full of Yankees from New York City that wouldn't know a wrestling match if it bit them. Threatening to kill me, threatening to kill my entire family. Bart Gunn's gonna be a star now. I said, I wanna kill you. I would like to just squeeze you until your britches are full and your eyeballs pop out. Number eight, Steve Austin. The foundations of the oh! school were established in... We, everybody knows, man, the famous uh, Austin 316 line at, uh, at King of the Ring, man. A lot of people call that, like, the very beginning of the Attitude Era. ECW at the <laughs> end of 1995. I mean, the sad man and, and spitting beer in his face. Here, Austin was finally given free reign to speak his mind. Sorry to believe Steve Austin. I've been for four years. I believe I deserve a break. I didn't get to climb a ladder to the top in WCW like this. He took aim at the politics in WCW that held him down. Sorry to believe that Steve Austin was in ECW and WCW. Kept the biggest potential superstar in wrestling on the goddamn ground. The bookers who kept him in the mid-card. Yeah, take me back to WCW. Let me be a mid-card wrestler. Let me just scramble around. Let me get no dues. Let me, don't give me nothing. Treat me like a piece of garbage. Feed me garbage. The older wrestlers hogging the spotlight. I was never allowed to reach past mid-card status in a WCW, brother. And worst of all, Eric Bischoff. Oh, Eric Bischoff. Injured Austin by FedEx. 
the circumstances dictated that I had to let him go. I didn't have any choice. He hadn't found that mark yet. A FedEx copy of your termination notice is on its way to your home in Texas. My world famous impression of the biggest piece of trash I ever laid my eyes on. Brain couldn't be here, so I had my secretary leave a message on his answer machine, and when he calls me, the bro I'm Steve Austin is like top tier, bro. Just like I did Austin. Number seven, Triple H. Some of Triple H's best work is when he blurs the line. By the way, I follow Steve Austin on Instagram. Don't think he's ever going to see any of my content, but good luck on the uh, whole uh, uh, cold plunge. You have more balls than me. I, I don't like the cold, so I think I'm going to stay in my own lane. But congratulations and good luck. Between a work and a shoot, such as his original The Game promo, where he spoke about being punished for his role in the curtain call. Madison Square Garden, I walked to the ring to say goodbye to my friends, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, Shawn Michaels. Who got punished for that, JR? Me. As Triple H became more of a main event player, and now you run the fucking company. To say what he wanted in his promos. If it wasn't for me, you'd be nothing. You got that? I made you. You know. Well, Damn. I can break you. Why don't you run along into the back and hang out with the other curtain jerkers while the, the main event guys stay in here and handle our business? The By the time curtain he got into jerkers. Power the authority, his promos were even more ruthless. I hate to be the one to break it to you, but you never do a dime, buddy. Guys like Jericho, Edge, Rob Van Dam. If any of those guys had been the face of the WWE. We'd all be working for Ted Turner right now. Without the WWE, your pipe bomb, and you really Triple H was great, bro. And regardless, if you legit believe the things he said. Why, if you're a millionaire, you're evil. If you're a billionaire, you're the Antichrist. I would rather eat well than sleep well. It played into the online discourse that Hunter held others down so he could stay on top. At WrestleMania, I put an end to your dreams and I bury Daniel Bryan. I'm going to tweet my Bro, That was uh, during the yes movement. If that doesn't work... Me and my friend Mark, we're gonna stop watching. Number six, shoot promos. We'll now look at a selection of standalone work shoot promos. Dewey Foley is a three year old boy. There's You're a, six sons of bitches! There's a lot of infamous shoot promos. You want someone like The Undertaker representing the World Wrestling Federation. So when you walked down that aisle last week, people at home, all they did was grab their remote, change the channel to WWF. And watch Stone Cold, a person you and your old friends got fired from here. When I was out hurt, you stupid bastard, you lying coward. Oh, this what was you great, do? bro. You do to get my this was great, man. When Matt Hardy was feuding with Edge around the time that Lita cheated on Matt while well, Matt was out with a leg injury. That shit was legitimate, bro. But obviously, there was a lot of elements in the story, a lot of like. A lot of the uh, contents within the story were fictionalized or whatever for TV, but it was it was nuts, man. People were like, you know, p people didn't know what to think. People did not li literally know what to think, bro. Two thousand five was great. My girl's head, and it's out of bed. Yeah. You were running around backstage talking about this vanilla ice wannabe named John Cena. Said he couldn't make it. Each of which saw wrestlers peel back the curtain to blur the lines between reality. Fucking Ventura. So. Was nothing but a bunch of guys pushing their sons. If you didn't have a dad in the business, you couldn't even get an opportunity. I left the World Wrestling Federation. Oh my God, does it really? Like this. Oh, my new name is Seven, by the way. So they've dressed me up like Uncle Fester. And they can all kiss my ass. I'm told to deliberately ignore Joey Styles in the holds during the matches. So I can tell stories. And let me tell you who doesn't give a shit about this company. That goddamn politician Hulk Hogan. All while bringing up behind the scenes drama we'd never normally hear about on television. Vince, you tried to bury me and you tried to kill me off. But you didn't get the job done. Bischoff is each and every one of these... We want blood. I throw a coffee on my Good head. Good head, Eddie Girl. I'm concerned, Eric Bischoff. You can take this job and <laughs> shove it up your, you know what? You're an obnoxious, overbearing ass. 
abuse of power. And I'm sick of all of you. Oh, that was so great. Sitting there criticizing me, calling me the coward. I'm the one here, day in and day out, in that wrestling ring, beating people up. Look at me, Tony. Look I, at me. I bro, I knew this was going to be in there, man. MJ Pipe Bomb. I want you to fire me. You fucking mark. Fire me. Fire me. Number five, Bret Hart. Bret Hart's feud with Shawn Michaels was littered with back Bro, and forth Bret Hart and jabs. Shawn Michaels this had one of the most infamous feuds in, in pro wrestling. Legit animosity towards each other. You might as well shake hands now, because you're going to hate each other after that. Phony little faker, why don't you right, take right, your little pussy off. foot injury? No. no. I'm going to go back and find no. your smile. Degenerate, that's what you are. A self-professed degenerate. Shawn Michaels, you're a disgrace to professional wrestling. Instead of facing me like a man, you're too busy. Shawn Michaels legitimately wasn't. Shawn Michaels legitimately was an asshole back then. I think it was a gay magazine. I want nothing to do with him. I just hope I don't have to run him over with my car or something because he bothers me that much. During Brett's return to the WWF in 19. Brett Hart legitimately did not like Shawn Michaels. Signed with the company instead of joining WCW. All I can say is they made me a great offer. Well, I'll be with the WWF forever. Whoa. That I'm not somebody that's greedy for money. Uh, I'm, I'm a person that's greedy for respect. Brett also mentioned how he made a promise to his sick nephew that the hitman would return. And that little boy passed away. From that very day, I promised myself that I would come back. Canada is a country where we still take care of the sick and the old, where we still have health care. After the passing of his brother Owen, Brett openly spoke about his dilemma in retiring from the ring on his own terms. Maybe it's time for me to move on and try to accomplish something else in another field or do something else. Which is sad when you consider less than half a year later, he would wrestle a match that ultimately led to the Hitman's career ending against his will. Number four, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels fired back at Brett in some unique ways, including the infamous line that implied Brett was sleeping with Sonny. Even though lately you've had some Sunny days, my friend. You still can't get the job done. In a similar vein to how Michaels got upset about being mocked by Brett for appearing in Playgirl, the Sunny comment angered the hitman and later led to a physical confrontation backstage. <laughs> how'd you know I was in that girly magazine? You had to flip through the pages just a little bit. Real animosity. Hitman, I've seen you on the road, and bro, you ain't no role model. But despite this, the bad blood kept on spewing. You couldn't go 10 minutes in any situation, if you know what I mean. Oh boy. If Brett can make a buck, he'd sell his mother. That's the truth. Now, wow. whether it be out here or back there, Red Heart hates my guts. I'm a hell of a lot safer out here than I am back there. Bro, I'm trying to think if there was a if there's a more infamous feud than Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart. I can't. I honestly can't think of one off the top of my head. It wasn't just a part of pro wrestling, part of WWF. It like they legitimately did not like each other. Like all the all the promos, all the all the heat or whatever, that was all one hundred percent real. They fucking hated each other. They hated so much. They hated each other so much that Brett went left WWF and went to WCW. Like he did not want to be in the same vicinity as Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels was, you know, he was, you know, he had a lot of demons back in the day, and he was not somebody that a lot of people really wanted to be around. Obviously, things have changed a lot, but I mean, I, I don't think that I don't think there's another in, more infamous feud than uh, Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart. You thought you were burying yourself before. Bringing that idiot out here is even worse. You have convinced me that you are the dumbest son of a bitch I have ever met in my life. If Damn, I bro. Down, I'm bringing everybody with me, and I'm going out. In a blaze of glory. Blaze of you glory. Your obsession with me, it will ultimately be your destruction. Brett and Sean buried the hatchet. Bro, the attitude there was so good, years man. Of Sean continuing to because back then, you didn't know what was real and what was not. He like they ran his ass down south with the rest of those dinosaurs. Somebody 
would nobody would even care in the United States. And your point the Jerotron 5000. I screwed you once, and I'll screw, screw you again. again. The Montreal Screwjob. How can you forget? You deserved what happened 12 years ago in Montreal. At that time, Sean was very opinionated and strong-willed. Boy, wait a minute! Hey, you were a bad guy. I was a good guy. You were a good guy. That's wait a minute. Number three. Paul Heyman. Heyman may be infamous for all the lies he's told behind the scenes. I always found it so much easier in life to lie. People accept lies so much easier. But so many of his promos are great because they're not based in fiction. Bro, Paul Heyman is great as well. Paul Heyman needs to go in the Hall of Fame this year in Philadelphia, bro. I mean, he got his start in W in uh, ECW. ECW originated from Philadelphia, in Philadelphia, New York, and you know the Hammerstein Ballroom, and then they moved to the ECW arena in Philadelphia. I'm telling you, bro, dude needs to be it needs to be filled with ECW alumni, and Paul Heyman needs to be one of the main people that gets inducted this year. I mean, it's only right. When is the next time that we're gonna have a WrestleMania in Philadelphia? Probably. They often cover real life matters and portray how Paul really feels. God knows the network has never put out one freaking commercial or one press release to let you know that we're here. We hate this stinking network. Hey, network, I dare you to throw me off the air. Because we all kind of know how ugly his daughters are and they kind of look just like the old man. And they probably talk like this. Just kidding. You understand me or not? I'm just kidding. How you doing at the seesaws in Louisville, Jerry? Huh? Your own sons! Don't call them sons! Heyman is also known for his shoot style promos. The only reason you are WWE champion for a year is because Triple H didn't want to work Tuesday. <coughs> Never afraid to hold back and deliver some home truths that people. Paul Heyman is great, bro. In 2005, WWE had no vision for you. And what did I do? I martyred my entire career for you. Don't you realize that the mop had more personality than you? That the mop had more charisma than you? That the mop had more chemistry with Perry than you? I mean, can you honestly believe that you ever had a chance against a mop? Get Terry up, Reynolds. Take a hike. Number two, John Cena. Cena has long since been known for his ruthless personal jabs at other wrestlers. You can say you're a grown man. I just don't believe you. You're a baby. I don't know whether to spank you or breastfeed you. But there was a noticeable change in John's promos after his feud with CM Punk in 2011. And I know no matter what I do, I could I could increase my. This was a great feud, Cena and Punk. Of doom, or maybe let my heel persona shine through. The PG Cena that had been seen in previous years wasn't going to work anymore. Instead, we'd see a more savage side to Cena. Every week, you show up, steal a paycheck, and you are a waste of space. You're just a guy holding on to that championship because I let you. And maybe, just maybe, if you hold on to this, you can finally walk around with the Western Superstars and say, Hey guys, look, I'm finally what I was supposed to be 10 years ago. Wayne Johnson is a self-centered, egotistical, see-through son of a bitch that wouldn't give a rat's ass if this company closed its doors tomorrow. You're on your way to greatness, but I can't put you in that class because you don't belong in that. Class. You are not broken down because if you was broken down, you wouldn't be posting workout videos on your wife's Instagram. Damn. You're just a fake. Congratulations. It took you five years to cut a halfway decent promo, but now I'm about to shrink you down to size. You're going to try as hard as you can to make it here. And if you ever fail, oh no, it ain't your fault. It's my fault, right? Because I buried you. I also know that the fiend is Bray Wyatt is. Husky Harris is a guy in a mask. Y'all look just like uh, Husky Harris. Shots. How was it getting arrested? And this included incorporating the real life issues of his opponents into promos. Why on earth do we continue? Oh my God! It's uh, chances to people during the pandemic. Say, what about me? You've had behavior problems in the ring. You've had behavior problems outside the ring. This is not your first year here, Dolph. It is your seventh. The Dolph Ziggler story goes like this. First, you were a caddy. 
Then you were a cheerleader. Then you had blonde hair. Then you had brown hair. Now you have blonde hair. Then you had a large girlfriend. Now you got a small girlfriend. Now you got a large man. And you walk around with a suitcase that has a contract and a bunch of Valtrex. For 300 days, you have been WWE champion. For 300 days, that championship has been irrelevant. You ain't stepped up, you fell off. All you've been showing the WWE Universe is that you got no balls, brah. You've rested on your laurels, you're a little bit comfortable, and you need to find the edge again. You know what? Stone Cold was right when he called you out on his podcast. Two bona fide WWE superstars, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns. One guy still trying to figure it out, Dean Ambrose. You're a dude named Mike who shortened his last name on the real world, tried to bootleg the Rock's electricity to get put on the WWE. When you got here, you straight up stole Chris Jericho's personality. You stole Ric Flair's figure four leg lock. You stole Daniel Bryan's offense and his personality. You're a dude dressed up as a dude playing another dude. I blame you. I'm still here because you can't do your job. Bro, man. So people people today still talk about that promo between uh, Cena and Reigns because Cena could not cut a fucking promo at all. And it was almost downright embarrassing. Obviously, things have changed now. Got to fucking respect the tribal chief. I'd so much rather be bald than have them pipe in fake crowd noise for my matches because nobody cares. Damn. John showed he could go toe to toe with anyone on the mic and came out on top. I think Rock has something written on his wrist. Just like I don't need my notes for my promo on my wrist. Number one, CM Punk. Punk's promos in WWE really began to hit their stride during his feud with Jeff Hardy in 2009. Here, Punk leaned into more of a straight CM Punk and Jeff Hardy. at the same time Bro. scolding Jeff. I am so upset we didn't get like a run in with Jeff Hardy and CM Punk in, in AEW. Whether it's like, you know, CM Punk walking backstage and, you know, Jeff Hardy maybe coming out of a room and, you know, and they lock eyes again or whatever. You know, just to bring it back to like 2011 that's one of the downfalls of CM Punk not lasting in AW very long kind of wish we could have, we would have got that that would have been a, a really awesome throwback for his struggles with substance abuse i know you know a thing or two about prescription medication what i don't think you realize is that you have to go to a doctor to legally obtain some i'm going to do what you should have done a long time ago straight edge society I'm just say no we all remember how Punk set the wrestling world alight with the original Pipe Bomb promo. But the fact the that Pipe Dwayne Bomb promo is in the main event of WrestleMania next year, and I'm not. A lot of people feel like a lot of people say that this promo is like the promo, or whatever that put CM Punk, uh, trying to be a main eventer to being a main eventer. Like obviously he's had he had world titles and stuff like that before then, but I feel like this put him on another level. This Pipe Bomb promo. Makes me sick. And in the months following, where Punk continued to shoot straight, still basing the content <clears throat> of his promos in reality. I love the place I work. I just hate the people in charge. Things like this company inside and outside the ring are filled with a parade of shameless ass kissers. Did you tell Chris Masters, somebody who over the past year has worked his ass off to get better, did you fire him? face to face did you call him up and say hey kid it's a bunch of things best of luck in your future endeavors you went from somebody who just sucked to somebody who just sucked, sucked up. up i have had friends work for this company and be unceremoniously fired damn bro don't bring this up man he talked about colt cabana uh you know being that friend or whatever that wwe let go don't bring his name up man they deserved it they deserved yeah. it they deserve it. Why? Because you don't know what makes a superstar in 2011. The guy that said the legendary Eddie Guerrero was a vanilla midget. What do you know about main event talent? You gonna punch me in the face? Or do you gotta go ask your wife permission first? CM Punk was so great. I'm so glad he's back. You did. When you moved to California to become a bodybuilder and you became a sports entertainer because you couldn't hack it. All right? Certainly we've got similarities. We don't smoke, we don't drink, we don't do drugs, but you know Anymore. something? <laughs> Anymore, yeah, I was about to say. Family, but you do wear her panties, don't you? That was nuts. I would, but um, I know where that hand's been. 
After joining AEW in 2021, Punk reflected on his horrific end to life in WWE. I know where that You're hands been. Get healthy physically, mentally, spiritually, or Punk in AEW, bro. Staying in the same place that got me sick in the first place. While also throwing jabs at the company. Go ahead, leave. Main event night four of a buy one, get one free extravaganza, and then get released. But no matter the company, Punk is never far from controversy. In AEW, personal issues backstage began to unravel on television. The CM Punk who loses his fake smile the second he doesn't get what he wants. Nobody wants you here, they never wanted you here. That whole locker room's afraid to say it, not me. Eddie Kingston is great. You talk a big game about workers' rights, yeah? Well, you've shown the exact opposite since you've gotten here. CM Punk, fragile ego, fragile body, weak mind, weak spirit. It's kind of ironic because The Shield was brought up to the main roster in WWE to be the bodyguards of CM Punk before they went out, they branched out on their own. So it's kind of ironic that, you know, all The Shield guys have heat with CM Punk. <laughs> Because I don't think it would... I mean, they would have brought came up to the main roster eventually. But I don't think it would have done it that early. The CM Punk who blames all of his failures on everyone else but himself. <clears throat> That's because I am the one true, genuine article in a business full of counterfeit bucks. Which ultimately led to Punk having to leave the promotion again, this time twice. I'm hurt and I'm old and I'm fucking tired I totally and I work with fucking children. I respect the situation. A sensational return to WWE meant mending fences. It's a little bit corny and it's a little bit cheesy and it's not going to sound like CM Punk. But I've changed. So if you're here now, if you're watching at home and you're disappointed that CM Punk walked out, I understand. And hell, ladies and gentlemen... I apologize. But after everything that had gone down prior, not everyone was going to welcome Punk back with open arms. Oh, Philly Phil, stay away. Stay away, you cancer. Get away from me forever. You spent 10 years slandering every single person back in that locker room. I'm not going to waste any more breath on somebody who's been gone for eight years, has done nothing but try and tear this place down. Congratulations. We're going on just over a month now and you're still here. And what better way to take advantage of potential real life concerns than to use them in storyline. Next Monday we get uh, video, be sure to check out Next Monday we get CM Punk and uh, Cody Rhodes. Mike workers in wrestling. Next Monday is going to be pretty lit, man. I can't wait to hear what Punk and uh, Cody Rhodes have to say to each other. Damn guys, man. So that was top 10 wrestlers whose promos got way too real. Obviously, you knew MJF was going to be in there. You knew CM Punk was going to be in there. You know, obviously, a lot of the backstage heat and a lot of the real time heat between uh, Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart that was going to be that was going to be in here somewhere. A lot of a lot of great promos, man. And that's the one cool thing about pro wrestling is like you know the a lot of the in ring aspect is is phenomenal. But I love when a guy gets in the microphone and just lets loose, man. And that's one of my favorite parts because it. Get you invest into the story, you know, whether that's a, a a feud that's just beginning or a feud that's going to culminate to a, a big time match at a pay per view or whatever it is. I mean, promos are what get you invested in the story. It's not just the in ring aspect. Uh, I wish Tony Khan would understand that a little bit more and add a little bit more story within AEW. But you know what? I, I I've been saying this for a while. WWE is sports entertainment. AEW is pro wrestling. You know what I mean? In WWE, they do more storytelling, storytelling, and all, all that, all that stuff. In AEW, man, they focus on the in-ring aspects. So, I mean, you can't necessarily be upset about it because you get both. You get, you know, the best of both worlds. You get to watch WWE on Monday and Fridays, and you get the all the story you want. And on, on Wednesdays and Saturdays, and I mean, if you want, if you're one of two people that watch Rampage on Fridays. You, you can watch, you know, phenomenal performers get in the ring and beat the fuck out of each other. So, you get best of both, you get the best of both worlds, man, in AW and WWE. So, you can't really be mad about it. Anyway, guys, man, if you guys like videos like this, short enough to do, make sure you guys smash the subscribe button with the notification bell turned on. Check out my social media accounts, links are in the description. Appreciate you guys checking out the channel and checking out the video. Make sure you guys leave a like. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. I can never